here is another one of those you better check with your local building codes first before designing a building where you have two sets of stairs that meet on a floor landing or a platform next to each other and would look something like this. And you're trying to figure out the minimum distance they need to be away from each other. And for residential stairs, that's going to be 36 inches. And for buildings with more than 50 occupants or public stairs, more or less, like something you might find at a retail, commercial, or industrial area, most building codes will require that distance to be 44 inches. However, I don't think this is going to be the case if this is going to be a fire escape exit or stairways where a lot of people are going to be moved in and out of an arena or public transportation area. And the same should be true if you have a situation like this where you have a set of stairs come down to a landing and then you would go down another set of stairs. And don't forget that these building codes change and might be different in your area. So make sure you check with your local building code authorities to find the numbers you need in your area. In this video, I will provide you with a simple way to install some type of a skirt board around your winder steps. And I won't be going over how to install the skirt board on the side of the stringers because I have already done that in a previous video. So let's go ahead and zoom in here at the bottom, give you an idea of how the skirt board might look. Zoom up to the top here. And in our example here, we're using a 1x4, and we're just butting it up against here. I'm not mitering anything. However, you could always miter it, just like we did here. And you could always miter the corner here, too. Just kind of trying to make it as easy as it possibly can on you. And if I want to keep the same measurement here, I'm probably going to have to angle the back of this board here and the bottom of this board here. And you'll see more of that here in a little bit. And that has to do with the fact that the angle of the step is going in this direction. We're not going to have the same problem over here. We won't need to angle this. We can just simply butt it up against the face of the riser. And you might be able to do that on the other side if you're going to be using carpeting or something that would cover the gap that would be produced here. If we just simply butted a board like this one up against the corner over here. Another view of it there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what you might have to do if we have an overhang or nosing. And all you need to do is notch the boards around the nosing or cut the nosing off. That's what I did over here because this was going to be a little more difficult. So here I just notched this skirt board around the nosing. And again, you could always just cut the nosing off if that's going to be easier. However, it's going to be a little more difficult to notch this board here around the nosing. That's why I went ahead and cut it off. So again, just cut a notch out of the nosing that the skirt board can slide into. So not too difficult, I hope. And over here, let's go ahead and remove the stairway so you can see how we notched everything. And let's go ahead and zoom in on the lower step here and then start heading up to the next step. And then let's go ahead and head up to the other step. And here's the angle I was talking about cutting so that we could end up with the same width here as the height or width of this board and this board here. If you don't mind this board being a little smaller in width, or wider in width, then you might be able to install the board without any of the angles. Even though I didn't miter this corner here, I didn't miter this one, you can have the same miters here over here, or you can use the butt joints that we did here up here to make everything work. In this video, I will try to explain whether or not the risers need to be closed or open in a stairway. And I think I can make this very simple by suggesting that most building codes will not allow a four inch round sphere, a round ball, to pass through any part of the stairway. However, some building codes use a six inch round sphere. 
so you would need to check with your local building department to verify that information. Another thing I want to point out is that stairs that are not permanently attached to the structure might not fall into this building code. And if you have stairs built for a fire egress or a fire escape route, then there's a very good chance the risers will need to be completely closed. Here is another problem that new stair builders might run into. And the bad part is you're usually not going to see it until it's too late. Because of the way we build our stairs, we usually attach our risers after we have attached the stringers. And then we usually start at the bottom attaching our tread so that we have something to stand on while we nail the next tread on. Because it's not going to make a lot of sense to start at the top. So after you have everything nailed together, you're going to notice the gap right here. And this is the problem I want to talk about in the video. And it's a simple problem to solve, especially if you know what you did wrong. Now, the problem here is that when you were laying out the stair treads and risers on the stair stringer, you just simply forgot to deduct the width of the ledger. And I think about the easiest way to catch this problem before it becomes a bigger problem will be to simply measure the distance from the front of the riser to the back of the riser when installing your first stringer. So you might miss it when you're laying out the stairs, but you're not going to miss it if you just measure it. This measurement here will be the same as this measurement here. And no, your treads won't always be 11 inches. They might be longer or smaller. And of course, this would be a good time to check all of the other measurements also. Due to high lumber prices and contractors aren't going to be ordering five or six extra boards just so they can get a few straight boards for their stair stringers. And this wasn't a problem when I first started out. If I had some bad boards, I would just simply flip them off of the pile. I wouldn't use them. But that's not the case today. So how do we deal with using crowned lumber to cut straight stair stringers? And I think the best suggestion I could give you would be to snap a line on the most convenient part of the board to create a straight line. And then use the circular saw to cut a straight line or the straightest line you possibly can. Or use this line to lay out your stair stringers. Then you can either discard the piece that you cut or attach it to the other side. And yes, this works. I'm not saying the structural engineer is going to like it. But if all you ordered was three pieces of lumber and you don't have a straight one in the bunch, then you can go ahead and lay out the stair stringer using the straight edge. Then we can go ahead and cut our stair stringer pattern and then use that pattern in the most creative way we possibly can by setting it on top of the other lumber that isn't straight and trying to position it into place to create the strongest air stringers we possibly can. And some of you are probably wondering, well, what am I going to do here? Well, if I have something like this, or possibly something like this, I might just leave it, depending on what I'm using for my risers and my treads. For example, if I'm using half-inch plywood for my risers, I'm probably going to want to cut a piece and attach it to the stringer. However, if I'm using 2x8s for the risers and inch and an eighth plywood for the treads, I might not need to. So again, just simply position the lumber in whatever way you think it's going to provide you with the most strength for your project. Then simply grab your pencil and mark along the sides of the pattern until you have a nice stair stringer that will create a straight upper section of the stairway and hope you don't need to drywall the bottom of it. Here is another problem that new stair builders might run into. And the bad part is you're usually not going to see it until it's too late. Because of the way we build our stairs, we usually attach our risers after we have attached the stringers. And then we usually start at the bottom attaching our tread so that we have something to stand on while we nail the next tread on. Because it's not going to make a lot of sense to start at the top. So after you have everything nailed together, you're going to notice the gap right here. And this is the problem I want to talk about in the video. 
And it's a simple problem to solve, especially if you know what you did wrong. Now, the problem here is that when you were laying out the stair treads and risers on the stair stringer, you just simply forgot to deduct the width of the ledger. And I think about the easiest way to catch this problem before it becomes a bigger problem will be to simply measure the distance from the front of the riser to the back of the riser when installing your first stringer. So you might miss it when you're laying out the stairs, but you're not going to miss it if you just measure it. This measurement here will be the same as this measurement here. And no, your treads won't always be 11 inches. They might be longer or smaller. And of course, this would be a good time to check all of the other measurements also. Here's an interesting stairway that I came across and thought I would share it with you. And even though I don't know exactly why the large snake trail is going down the center of this stairway, I think I have a pretty good idea what it's used for. Especially after checking out the footage on these stairways where once the rain started flowing a little bit heavier, you ended up with a small river flowing down the stairway that would be very difficult to walk up or down. And even though this won't meet most of the building codes I've referenced throughout the years on my stair building channel, I'm willing to guess that there are very few accidents, if any, on this stairway that looks fairly simple to use. And if I'm wrong, or you know what country this stairway is located in and why it is built the way it's built, let us know in the comment area. Here is another one of those you better check with your local building codes first before designing a building where you have two sets of stairs that meet on a floor landing or a platform next to each other and would look something like this. And you're trying to figure out the minimum distance they need to be away from each other. And for residential stairs, that's going to be 36 inches. And for buildings with more than 50 occupants or public stairs, more or less, like something you might find at a retail, commercial, or industrial area, most building codes will require that distance to be 44 inches. However, I don't think this is going to be the case if this is going to be a fire escape exit or stairways where a lot of people are going to be moved in and out of an arena or public transportation area. And the same should be true if you have a situation like this, where you have a set of stairs come down to a landing and then you would go down another set of stairs. And don't forget that these building codes change and might be different in your area. So make sure you check with your local building code authorities to find the numbers you need in your area. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different stair guardrails, not the grippable handrail. This is the guardrail that protects you from falling off of the side of the stairs and might have either 36 or 42 inches as the minimum height, depending upon your local building codes. Now, a guardrail like this one here or this one here is going to cost a lot more then a guardrail that is drywalled. And if this is built correctly, it's going to be a lot stronger and cheaper to build. And I just don't see any way around it, and that's why I'm making the video. And this would include the guard railing for the area above if needed also. And my guess looking at this and this is that they built the guardrail too low and the building inspector caught them on it and then made them add something to the height of it. Yes, I've seen this plenty of times before. You don't want to get into this. You just simply want to drywall it. And if you want it to look nicer, add a cap to it or a decorative piece of lumber on the top. You really don't want to leave the top of the guard railing unprotected because people are going to be touching it with their dirty, filthy hands constantly. And that's going to lead to more cleaning and eventually repainting it. I'm not saying you can't leave it off. However, this could be something else that would save you a few more dollars because you wouldn't need to finish the top of the guard railing with drywall and the edge metal. You could just simply buy a 1x6 or a 1x8 and shape it to fit and then paint that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that you don't ever build something like this because it looks fantastic. All I'm suggesting is that if you're looking to save a few dollars, now you know how to do it. 
And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.